afternoon. Welcome to Sportworks Kingdom Owens. I pray you're doing great today. We've uh, kind of calm before some storms we have our heading our way. This passage we're going to jump in today. Jesus, well, he never pulls punches. He, he <laughs> says some things that I imagine are difficult for these folks to hear on this day. They're difficult still for folks today to hear. Uh, I know I'm playing baseball, football, having coached, having now been around high-level coaches for, for many years, it's not shocking to hear something come out of a coach's mouth that's rather harsh, blunt, to the point. Um, and, and the reality is there's just too much hard work, not enough time to, to sit and worry about someone's emotions or feelings. Sometimes things just need to be said in order to push someone forward. Um, again, I, I'm not going to not going to and probably shouldn't reiterate some of the hardest things I've I've had said to me, heard said, maybe even said myself. You know, I'm not making an excuse for bad language. I'm just talking about bluntful truth that pushes someone forward to have to get off a fence to move one way or another and to understand where the truth lies. Again, within, within film, we say the tape never lies. Um, and so we're looking at everything from uh, effort to to execution to everything in between sometimes some hard things need need to be said and addressed um, especially when we're dealing with with young men young women that, that are that are learning that are growing and hopefully we're all continuing to do so but but I want to jump into this passage because we, we finished yesterday and it said that so many believed in him and, and so then Jesus starts and, and again we're in John chapter 8 and we're in verse 20. I mean, verse 31 to, to verse 38. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. There's honestly one, one of three things John says that, that folks will know that we're his. Um, so imagine kind of having a scar, some kind of symbol that, that showed these things so that if anybody saw you, they would quickly know and identify you as someone belonging to Jesus. So this first one Jesus talks about is if you abide in me. Other translations talk about obey my commands. So, so if we're abiding in, in Jesus and in his word, then we're obeying his commands. We're wanting to follow. We're wanting to please him. His kingdom come. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that we begin to, to want to live a life for him. And then as we do so, he says, that that truth will set us free. The, the, the reason you give boundaries on a child it is, is so that they understand where, where they can push to, and then there's great freedom in that. There's absolute freedom in knowing where the boundary lines are and, and what's best for me. And, and you will freak somebody out, just suddenly give somebody who's had very limited choices a, a million different choices, and suddenly then the boundaries are off. And, it, and now what do I do? That It's much simpler safer, secure, when you know where the fence line is, you know that it's safe, you know that God has you, and so we're to abide, we're to, to rest in those spots. Well, the fact of the matter is they get a little upset at what Jesus says in this, because they answered him, we are the offspring of Abraham, have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? So do you, do you pick up on that, that, that their immediate response is, what, what do you mean it'll set us free? We, we've never been enslaved. We, we are free, which is interesting considering that, that Romans were, were in rule and all of that, but they haven't been really as free as, as they were in the times of David in quite some time. But then Jesus answers back, and here's where he just does not hold back. And I hope you hear what he's saying in this. Truly, truly. And again, anytime we want emphasis, Jesus is going to repeat something. And it's truly, truly. Verily, verily is another translation of that. It's, it's a coach kind of giving something that grabs your attention, gives you that look. And, and you know, man, I better pay attention. This is serious. I need to digest what's about to be said. Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. Yeah, of course, we, we know that though for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're, we're all in that boat. So, so it says, the slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if you think about those those who served and were in the house, I mean, they, they don't stay around forever. It's the family that's always back, that, that is there forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. 
I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. So, so he just basically told them they're, they're sons of the devil, that, that they will, in their sin, obey the things that, that, that the devil would have us do. And, and the fact is that that is who we are apart from Christ. We, we are lost men and women. And, and in our sinfulness, we have no power to break free of that. We have no righteousness. We need Jesus to set us free. And, and he's going to finish that ultimately on the cross and raise him again and send in his spirit. So, so we're back to the fact that we need Jesus. Did you wake this morning knowing of your need for Jesus, knowing of your sinfulness, and knowing that, that, that he loved you and his grace was enough to set you free? Again, the thing, thing that doesn't understand he's enslaved, it's never going to move. God, that's why we, we believe fully that God moves in us first to draw us to himself, because one must know that he's lost before he can become saved and understand that he needs to follow Jesus, that his ways aren't the, the right way, that his ways will ultimately. There's a way that seems right to a man, Scripture says, in the end it leads to death. Romans talks all, all about the fact that, that, that we're all sinners. Isaiah 53 talks about that, that we're all sheep that have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. That there is a great need for us to be set free. And in that freedom, you will never be freer than when you're obeying abiding by, obeying, and living in what God has laid out for us. I pray that that would be your goal, your desire, a hunger. If it's a new thing, I pray that it's something that you would act on and begin to ask questions where you have doubts that you'd keep digging, that we'd come to understand that, that Jesus had to come, he did come, uh, and that we not miss that, and, and that we would be ready for Jesus to tell whatever hard truth we need to hear, that we would hear it because that's what we want to, to change and to grow us in him. But Heavenly Father, I give you my friends, and we thank you for the day and for, again, your grace and your love and your mercy for the fact that you did come to set captives free and, and you did conquer the grave. You died, you rose again, and, and, and absolutely there is no power that can hold us uh, when, when you come and set us free, that your spirit will come and reside and make us new men and women, a new creation, change our heart, Begin to give us a heart that would love you and want to abide and want to obey you uh, far beyond anything this world offers. But again, we thank you and love you, and, and we just continue to pray that you would guide us on this journey. We pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you all. You, you all have a wonderful rest of the day. So many of you, were, we're praying for different things that you're going through. And for all of us, just with, with mental health and, and trusting and just not really knowing other than, hey, today God has us, and let's walk obediently in what we can today. Again, thank you and have a great day.